At this place in history, we're in Montgomery on a beautiful day with the executive director of the Vermont Historical Society, Steve Perkins. What brings us out here? So we're standing in front of a really cool old building here that's got a great history. So we're going to go meet Scott Perry, who's chairman of the board of the Montgomery Historical Society, to tell us all about it. It was a church. It was Montgomery's first church. It was started in 1832, finished in 1835. It was built by the Episcopal congregation here in town. They were the second congregation to organize, but the first to complete a church. And after the Civil War, it really took off when the good times hit Montgomery, and they were able to add a bell, a clock, a uh, crenellation of the tower outside up on top, and all the stained glass windows that you see around you now, starting in 1874 and going to about 1920. The church was renamed St. Bartholomew's in the late 1800s, stayed that way pretty much until the church uh, had fallen into disrepair in the 1960s, and that's why we have it now, and it's used as a community events uh, uh, location as well, as a place where we can do, manage the legacy and the, the artifacts that belong to the town. And there's been an ongoing restoration effort over the years. Can you tell us about that? Many, yeah. When we got the building, it had no electricity, no plumbing. It didn't have any heat. In danger of being condemned because the water damage to the front tower, the society made it weather tight, stored the clock and the bell, and then put them back about 10 years later after they were able to raise the funds and, and come up with a plan. And then even since then, we've done a lot of work to restore the timber frame structure, but also to take care of the stained glass windows. Can you tell us about some of the windows in here? They're gorgeous. Sure, we have two types of stained glass windows. We're really not exactly sure where they were made, but they're pictorial or allegorical. As you can see, uh, they ran out of gas as it was, uh, for, so they never got the last one done. Basically in memory of, in honor of, some of the founders of Montgomery, the Clapp family. They basically range from the late 1870s to this one over here, which is Mary Magdalene to about 1920. And is that gentleman in the portrait at the front a member of the Clapp family? He is. That is Joel Clapp up there. Joel was the first person born in Montgomery and he uh, went off to UVM at some point to become a lawyer but decided he didn't have a taste for that and instead became a, an Episcopal clergyman and he was the first clergyman and pastor here at this church. He went on to serve uh, with a great distinction at a number of Vermont communities, Sheldon, Shelburne, Bellis Falls, he served in Grenville, Maine, and also New York City for a while. Now, I understand there's a very unique way to heat this building. There is. If you uh, look at the floors between the pews, you'll see that there's a hinged cover. And if you open that hinge, you'll see that it's a slat that just looks down into the basement, which is kind of a half basement. And the early heating was done by wood stoves. And there were at least two wood stoves down in that crawl area, or the half basement. And probably some kid on an early Sunday morning would come over, get the fires going, and then take coals from the wood stove, put them into a bucket, and then hang them on a hook below those slats in the floor. And that's how they would heat the building for that Sunday. Yeah, it seems like a fire hazard, but they wrapped the beams with split sap buckets as heat shields, and that uh, helped uh, at least keep it from catching fire. If people want to come and experience this, this building and learn about the Historical Society today, how can they do that? Well, they can pay attention to our sandwich board outside when there's just something going on. We also have a farmer's market uh, all summer long, and we have the building open so they can come in and, and give kind of impromptu tours. And we have a website that they can go to and get the latest information on what we're up to, as well as some of the background of uh, what's involved with the windows and that kind of thing at this place in history.